Hello, and thank you for tuning into From God's Heart with your host, Ann Thomas of Ann Thomas Ministry. Great morning, everyone. How are you doing on this wonderful, wonderful Sunday morning? I pray that you awoke with a song in your heart um, that this morning, more than any other morning, God just showered you. You felt his love. You felt his grace. You felt his peace. I tell you, uh, this is such an interesting time for the body of Christ. I'm talking to so many others and myself included, where uh, some of us are just being stretched. Are you being stretched? Do you know what I mean by being stretched? I mean, absolutely taken out of your comfort zone, like taken out of everything familiar, uh, the people you would normally be able to turn to, the things you would normally uh, rely upon to get you through a hard time, get you out of a hard place. Uh, you are being stretched and those persons or things have been removed so that literally all you have is God. And that's not a bad place to be, friends. It's, um, it's actually a great place to be once we stop trying to hold on to things that God is removing because he wants us to hold on to him. And when we do stop kicking and screaming and fighting, we realize that not only is God all that we have, but he really is all that we need, amen? And this morning, we're gonna go into a slightly different format where I did not come prepared with any particular teaching and any points, you know, any particular points that I want to get across this morning, because I am led that there are many of us who are having what I would call a wilderness experience. You know, a wilderness experience is when God is allowing you to be in a place of isolation. Now, isolation doesn't mean there isn't anyone around you. In fact, there are others around you, but they are not going through what you're going through. And so they cannot relate to what you're going through. They're not called to go where God is calling you. So they can't go where you're going. They can't stand where you're standing. They can't understand what you're experiencing because they're not called to what God has called you to. And I know some of you who are listening, that it makes sense. And I pray that God will continue to give you revelation because you're in a place and you're going, my God, there are people around me yet I feel alone. But friend, you're not alone. God is with you. Uh, I feel like people don't understand me. Well, it's okay because God understands you. You feel like everything that has been familiar has now become unfamiliar. It's okay because when God removes, he also replaces but he has to do some stripping away, if we can say that. He has to bring us to the end of ourselves sometimes, to where we stop looking to others and to things to be our God, amen? And friends, sometimes the wilderness experience is not anything bad that we've done. It's just that God is ready to take us to a new level. And in order to take us to the next level, we've got to leave the old level things behind, amen? Remember, the word says that his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So the way that God is about to do this thing, even if he told us, we probably would not be able to understand. But nonetheless, we're called to trust him. Amen. And so uh, before we continue, I want to do two things. Number one, I want to thank each and every one of my listeners who continue to tune in every Sunday morning. I know it's early and I thank you for your commitment. I thank you for taking the time to leave messages on the discussion board. Don't forget on Friday evenings at 8.03 p.m. You can now catch the previous Sunday's broadcast also on this radio station, AM 1110 WTIS. And our radio station have moved to a new uh, listen live format that everyone is raving about. And if you're listening, if you're used to listening on your phone, you now have to download an application called Free Streams app, which if you have the iPhone or an Android, you download that application. Once you have it downloaded, choose Talk. And from that menu, you'll see the WTIS radio station. Click that and you can listen worry-free. 
So with that being said, let's go ahead and open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now just acknowledging your presence, thanking you, Father, for your mighty grace. Thank you, Lord, for your love that is so unconditional. Thank you, Lord, that you never leave us, you never forsake us. Thank you that you do everything on purpose with a purpose, Father. Thank you that you created us for a purpose, Father, that each of us have purpose and destiny ingrained in us, Lord, and that everything that happens in our lives, the good, the bad, and the ugly, Father, that when we surrender it to you, that you are a Romans 8:28 God. You make it all work together for our good and for your glory. Father, help us to surrender to the process of your refining us, Father, of you making us more like your son, Jesus. Father, we just come expecting to hear from your heart today. Lord, I ask you to hide me behind the cross. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, today I am led to go to the book of Psalms, chapter 63. So grab your Bibles and go with me to Psalm 63, because we're going to read some verses that um, are written when David is actually in the wilderness of Judah. And we're just going to read and I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to speak through me this morning. Like I said, I didn't come with an agenda, but the Holy Spirit did. Amen. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says in verse one, oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me with more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night because you are my helper. I sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your strong right hand holds me securely. But those plotting to destroy me will come to ruin. They will go down into the depths of the earth. They will die by the sword and become the food of jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who trust in him will praise him, while liars will be silenced. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Oh, God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you. Friend, are you in that place, that weary land where it feels like there's no water, there's nothing, no sustenance. It feels like there's nothing fresh happening in your life. It feels like things are dying. That's the word I'm looking for, where things are dying. But you know that there is a need in your life. And that need, friend, is to draw closer to God. It is to rely upon him more than ever before. Why? Because in the wilderness, there's stretching, there's preparation. Remember Jesus was led to the wilderness right before he was used mightily. And friend, your wilderness is your place of preparation. But in that preparation, God is, he's literally removing anything or anyone that you have built a reliance upon. Any person, uh, anything that you have allowed to become your God, little g that you've looked to be your savior, your comforter, because the father in heaven, he wants to be those things to us, amen? And it says, I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night. How many of you are, are, are like me, where in the night when we're trying to get our rest, that's when the brain starts going, right? And that's when the enemy starts coming in with thoughts. You know, he wants us to think negatively about everything. And then he wants us to now not only think it because everything begins in our thoughts, right? But then it moves from our thoughts to where? Our words. And so he wants us, if we can lay awake at night worrying, which by the way is a sin, but worrying about things, then the next thing we do when we wake up in the morning is we start confessing those things, right? So at night it says, I lie awake thinking of you 
like last night, I'll, you know, I'll just say I had a, a very disturbing dream that when I awoke, I immediately knew that was not of the Lord. But rather than meditate on the dream, I began to meditate on the things of God. I did what Philippians 4 verse 8 says, to think on these things, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that, that are of a good report, things that are true. Hello? Because the enemy wants you to meditate on what? Lies, right? Because the word says that he is the father of lies. But it says, lifting up my hands, that's in verse 4, to you in prayer, lifting my hands, praising you as long as I live. Friends, even right now, I'm in a place um, where God is stretching me, but I'm even now I'm talking to you, I'm lifting my hands. Why? Because the very physical act of lifting my hands says to the enemy, hey, you don't have a victory here. God has the victory. I have the victory. Amen. So I lift my hands and I praise you with my lips, Father. And I praise you with songs of joy. You know, there's a song that says praise confuses the enemy. So I just mess him all up. He goes, oh my gosh, I've, I've sent this her way. I've sent that her way. Yet she's still praising God. And then he goes, well, let me go bother somebody else because this chick, you know, I, I can't get to her today. You know, and I thank God that it also says in verse 9, but those plotting to destroy me will come to ruin. They will go down into the depths of the earth. Who's plotting to destroy you? It's not man, friends. We can't put a face to the fight. It's the enemy. Yes, working through people, but let's get this clear. A lot of times, ignorance is just bliss, you know? People don't know what they don't know. They're not called to do what you're called to do. And it says, but the king will rejoice in God. All who trust in him will praise him while what? The liars are silenced. So right now, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are silencing the liar, the father of all lies, Satan, that his tongue right now is tied and the truth of your word will always prevail in the mighty name of Jesus. And right now, friends, I just, I just want to encourage you before I leave the air that God has you firmly in his hands, securely, like what the word says. It doesn't matter what you see in the natural, friends. I'm calling you to come up here. Come up higher. Come up to a place where you see things from God's perspective. That's where I'm looking. I'm looking out of the window from heaven right now. I mean, literally, I mean, I'm looking out and I'm seeing trees in the natural, but in the spirit realm, I see myself seated next to Jesus. Thank you, Lord, seated in high places. And I just got to give God thanks. I mean, that just makes me want to cry that God seats me next to his son. What an awesome place to be. And friend, maybe you can't see yourself seated in that place this morning because you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. And if you would love to have Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, say this prayer with me right now. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. I recognize that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask you to forgive me of my sins, and I thank you for forgiving me. And as you forgive me, help me to forgive others who've hurt me. Father, teach me your word. Help me to become a person of prayer. And show me your purpose and your destiny for me in your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you said that prayer, send an email to email at anthomasministry.com and let me know. I'd love to pray with you and for you. Until next time, according to Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, may the joy of the Lord be your strength. Thank you for tuning into From God's Heart. If you are blessed by the message or anything shared today, please consider being a ministry partner through your prayers and financial support by visiting anthomasministry.com and click Partner With Us. Our financial partners keep this program on the air, help us minister to the lost, and encourage, equip, and empower believers. And as you sow into the lives of others, you can expect God to not only meet your needs, but to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or imagine. Until next time, may the blessings of the Lord make you rich and add no sorrow.